Namaskar and welcome back to this lecture on concrete engineering and technology. In this module of lectures, we have been talking about subjects ranging from fundamentals of concrete to proportioning concrete mixes, stages in concrete construction, special concretes, mechanisms of deterioration in concrete structures, reinforcement and maintenance of these structures. And we will continue our discussion today with the special concretes and we have talked about it before as to what makes a concrete special or a concrete operation special and that could arise from any one or more of the following conditions, use of special materials, special environmental conditions, special properties, special methods of placing or the conditions in which the concrete is placed. So, under any of these conditions the concrete becomes special and we need to be careful when we are dealing with any of the operations involved whether it is mixing or it is material selection or it is transportation and so on. Now, having said that we continue our discussion with properties and in the last about 30 years high performance concrete and performance is related to properties. So, depending on the property that we choose to have we could have a high performance concrete. And in the last 30 years we have talked of high performance concrete primarily in two contexts. It is easy to guess one is compressive strength that is we have talked of high performance concrete in terms of high strength concrete because the strength or compressive strength to be more precise is the fundamental property of concrete. Having said that workability and compactability is another very important property of concrete, fresh concrete in fact, where we can talk in terms of high performance concrete. That is the concrete should be so workable that it becomes self compactable. So, in this discussion today we will be primarily talking in terms of high workability concretes and let me go back and trace a little bit about the history of self compacting concretes that is one of those concretes which is very highly workable. And now what is a highly workable concrete is something which we need to think about a little bit and we will probably answer the question a couple of slides later. But getting back to the history of the self compacting concrete it was about 1983 that there was a major concern in Japan arising out of durability of concrete structures and the professionals there looking at different aspects felt that one of the reasons for concrete structures to be having the problem of premature deterioration was the fact that concrete could not be vibrated properly that it was not compacted properly. It was it showed signs of some kind of segregation or the other. And with that kind of a backdrop Professor Okamura from the University of Tokyo developed the basic concept of self compacting concrete with his colleagues. It took about two years to develop the field experiments and implementation and in about 1989 there was an open experiment in the university where professionals from different construction companies and so on they participated and saw what self compacting concrete was. This led to a joint research project with the different construction companies participating and knowledge was shared the concepts were understood better and it led to a more widespread application of self compacting concrete and is a landmark as far as the concrete engineering is concerned. In 1993 the concept of including self compacting concrete or concretes with high workability as part of the high performance concrete was clearly established. And then in 1994 and 97 we can see international symposia and workshops being held professional bodies recognizing the concept as an important landmark in the history of concrete engineering. So, as far as compressive strength is concerned the issue relating to high strength concrete is being dealt with separately 
as far as this series of lectures is concerned. And today we will talk about high workability concretes which could be of any strength. So, basically we are separating the issue of strength from that of workability. High strength concrete may or may not be highly workable and similarly self compacting concrete or highly workable concrete need not be high strength. So, having said that what is high workability concrete? It is difficult to define because there is no clear definition as to what high workability concrete is, but perhaps what we could say is that a concrete where the workability cannot be measured in terms of let us say the slump test and we enter the domain of slump flow that is one of the tests that we need to check for defining high workability concretes. Now, if we recall the height of the slump cone is about 300 mm, it is difficult for the slump test to be used when the slump exceeds let us say 18 centimeters or about 180 mm or 200 mm. So, high workability concretes are those concretes which have a slump higher than let us say about 180 to 200 mm and we need a separate set of tests to check their quality, to differentiate one concrete from another and use them at site as part of our regular quality assurance programs. Those tests are not what we are going to talk about today. What we will talk about is the fundamentals and going back to this picture here which shows a slice of concrete modeled as another picture here where the course and the fine aggregates have been taken to be randomly distributed and we have a lot of space filled in with cement particles, water and so on. If all this gets consolidated, we have a certain volume of gravel which is course aggregate, a certain volume of sand, a certain volume of cement, water and air in a concrete mix. Now, this picture is what we have seen several times and what we will do today is to relook at this picture and try to revise and revisit some of the fundamental definitions as far as concrete engineering is concerned. We know that paste is a combination of water and cement, mortar is a combination of paste and fine aggregate that is water and cement with fine aggregate and concrete is a combination of mortar and coarse aggregate. Now, if we look at it in a different way, concrete is a suspension of coarse aggregate in mortar. So, it is a suspension of coarse aggregate in mortar. Similarly, mortar is a suspension of fine aggregate in paste. So, we have a paste phase and we have fine aggregate. So, when fine aggregate is suspended in paste, we have what is called mortar and going the other way around again paste is a suspension of cement in water. Now, all these three that is paste, mortar and cement can therefore, now be modeled or looked upon as a combination of a fluid and a particulate phase. As far as the paste is concerned, water is obviously the fluid and cement or any other similar material that is the particulate phase as far as the paste is concerned. When it comes to mortar, this paste serves as the fluid phase and the sand serves as the particulate material. Finally, concrete the mortar that we have serves as the fluid phase and the coarse aggregate is the particulate. This understanding of concrete in terms of relating it to the fundamental properties of paste, 
and then mortar is important when we try to study or understand the behavior of high workability concretes changes the characteristics of the later. Now, the presence of cement particles in water changes the characteristics of the latter that is water which we know is a fluid is a liquid. The properties of water in terms of its viscosity and so on they change when cement particles are added to it. When we are talking of addition of cement particles in water today we are not including in fact we are trying to exclude the discussion of hydration. We are looking at cement as purely some particles which are added to water and if they are added in a certain degree that is the amount of cement particles that are added. It is not that you take a liter of water and just add a gram of cement and it becomes a paste no. We have to add a certain amount of powder in order that the properties of water are modified and it becomes and behaves like a paste. We are not getting into the numbers today I am leaving that out as an assignment as to what is the kind of numbers or what is the kind of concentration what is the amount of cement that needs to be added in order that the properties of water are modified to the level that it is looked upon as a paste. In fact, the more powder we add the more paste like or the viscosity the more paste like behavior we will have as far as water is concerned. So, we have to keep in mind today that addition of particles beyond a certain threshold limit lead to fundamental changes in the viscosity or the rheology of the fluid phase and that is something that progressively happens when we are looking at concrete. So, as far as the paste is concerned the presence of cement particles or in fact any other particles which are similar in size. Obviously, you can imagine that if we add coarse aggregate to water we will hardly get paste, but if we add fly ash in a certain amount we surely will get some kind of paste whether it hydrates or it does not is a different matter. So, we are not talking of hydration and strength development today our concentration today is in terms of understanding the behavior of fresh concrete and workability of the fresh concrete. So, in that context let me reiterate that the presence of particles in water primarily cement in the case of concrete engineering changes the characteristics of water and this depends on the amount of the powder and its properties. If we have one cement we may get certain paste like properties at a certain concentration in another cement those properties would be achieved if the concentrations are higher or lower depending on what are the properties of cement that we talk about. An example that comes to my mind is the fact that if you have done the tests relating to the standard consistency of cement you have a picture in mind that if we add say 30 percent or 32 percent of water what is the nature of the paste that we get compare that with the nature of the paste if the water content is about 40 percent and so on. So, in this case we are not talking in terms of water cement ratio from the point of view of strength development, but we are talking about the powder concentration in order to get paste like behavior. Now, this leads us to the idea that for a paste we can talk in terms of a water powder ratio from the point of view of concentration of cement particles in water as modifying the properties of water and not really strength development. Extending this argument we can consider mortar as a fluid whose properties are modified by the presence of sand and the extent of modification depends on the properties and the volume of the sand that is used. So, in the same manner that if we continue to increase or decrease or whatever 
the cement particles in water the properties of the paste will keep changing. Similarly, if we alter the concentration of sand or the amount of sand that is added to a paste the properties of the mortar will keep changing and depending on the paste that we begin with the situation could be quite different for a given volume of sand that is added to the mortar. Now, if that is clear we can say that the extent of modification in the properties depends upon the amount of sand that is being added to the paste. If we have a paste of a certain rheology and we add some sand there will be some changes, if we add more sand there will be more changes and so on. In other words the properties of the mortar are a function of the properties of the paste and the concentration of sand besides of course, the properties of sand. If the sand is fine the extent of modification will be different compared to a sand which is coarse and this fineness or coarseness of sand can be measured in terms of fineness modulus. Now, of course, our interest primarily is concrete and therefore, if we finally, look at concrete at that level the properties of mortar are being modified by the presence of coarse aggregates. So, given a property viscosity or any kind of rheological behavior of a mortar that gets modified when we add coarse aggregate to it and the extent of modification again depends upon the properties of the coarse aggregate that is added, the amount of coarse aggregate that is added and of course, the final product depends on the initial properties of the mortar itself. In other words what we can now say that the properties of the concrete are related to the properties of the mortar and the concentration of coarse aggregate and of course, the properties of the coarse aggregate themselves. Now, what are the properties of coarse aggregate that could be important? They could be size, shape, gradation, density and so on. Now, once we are talking about flowing or high workability concretes, then we could be talking of a concrete which would flow normally that is if we want to just pour concrete in a large unreinforced section or at times we have concrete flowing in closed spaces for example, in pipes when the concrete is being pumped or when the concrete even moves through reinforcement in reinforced concrete construction. In either case it is important that we are careful about two properties one is segregation and the other is aggregate interlock. Both these issues are of major importance when we are dealing with high workability concretes. Now, let us take a look at the concrete flowing in pipes for example, we obviously will have some friction at the interfaces that is at the surface of the pipes and depending on this friction and other factors the velocity profile could be this or it could be something closer to this that is that is not so much change across the cross section of the pipe as far as the velocity is concerned and of course, the velocity is also related to the flow rate of concrete through the pipe and this is related to the energy that we are imparting to the concrete at the pump. So, properties of the profile are related to the deformability and the properties of the fluid and the liquid phase. So, we have reasonable theoretical background developed as far as fluid mechanics is concerned where all these issues in terms of fluid flow in pipes under pressure and so on that is very well understood. As far as concrete is concerned that raises certain problems for concrete engineers and for construction sites and that is something which we must also keep in mind when we are talking in terms of highly workable concretes or flowing concretes or concretes that are being pumped 
through pipes and is being placed at different locations. Now, this business of friction on the interface results in deposition of some material which is primarily mortar on the surface. Now, how does this deposition affect us? This deposit indeed must be cleaned at the end of a concreting operation for the simple reason that the deposit can reduce the cross sectional area, because initially the deposit is fresh, but as more hydration takes place it hardens and the kind of cross section which is available for concrete flow reduces if this deposit is not removed. Also in case of RMC equipment that is the ready mix concrete equipment being used for different mixes, this deposit will tend to contaminate subsequent mixes if the equipment is not cleaned at the end of each operation involving a certain kind of concrete. In fact, the properties of the first batch may be slightly different from those of subsequent batches, because only in the first batch we will have this kind of a deposit problem more than the other batches. So, in fact, in certain constructions where we are extremely concerned about the quality of concrete being used, we have to make sure that all the equipment that is used is properly primed or coated with the kind of concrete that is going to be actually used. So, we need to run a batch of grout or mortar or maybe even concrete and throw it away without actually using it, only to ensure that all the equipment that is used is having a coating of the kind of concrete that is going to be used in that construction. Now, coming to segregation. This slide here shows the segregation of coarse aggregates, that is the coarse aggregates have separated from the concrete and primarily it is the mortar which is flowing ahead. Segregation basically means settlement of heavier particles from the fluid phase and that can happen as far as concrete is concerned when coarse aggregate settles out of mortar as is shown here or sand settling out of paste in the case of mortar and perhaps even cement settling out of water as far as paste is concerned. And in fact, to that extent bleeding is indeed a measure or a form of segregation in concrete. Now, we must remember when we are talking of concrete that all constituents that is cement, sand and coarse aggregate are heavier than water and which is the only liquid in the system. So, we have to make sure that the liquid phase that is the paste and the mortar has the right kind of properties to ensure that segregation does not happen. That is the coarse aggregates are actually carried along with the mortar when the concrete is moved either under pressure through pipes or it flows on its own under gravity and so on, if it is moving in an unrestricted manner. Now, depending on the properties of the fluid medium, only a certain volume fraction of the particulate material can be carried. Now, this is a qualitative argument, which basically says that for a given fluid medium, a given mortar in our case if we pack more coarse aggregate in that, then it can carry the possibility of segregation increases. Whereas, if the amount of coarse aggregate is very small, it is relatively easier for the mortar to carry that amount of aggregate. Looking at the whole thing from another point of view, we need to maximize the amount of coarse aggregate in our concrete, because that is the cheapest material. If that argument is coupled with the kind of argument which is put forward here, we really see that for a given type of mortar or a mortar with a given rheological properties, we can only pack in 
a certain amount of maximum amount of coarse aggregate in that mortar without running the risk of segregation. The segregation definitely will happen if the coarse aggregate content is higher than a certain number, it may not, it will surely not happen if the amount of coarse aggregate is less than a certain number and in between there will be a zone where the segregation may happen or may not happen. So, if we look at the chances of segregation happening and this is the chance or this is the level at which it definitely will happen and we plot the volume of coarse aggregate here beyond a certain point the chances of segregation happening are very high and below a certain level here they are more or less negligible. And in this case here well there is a possibility that the segregation may happen or may not happen depending on all kinds of factors. So, it is important for concrete engineers to appreciate that there is only this amount of coarse aggregate that we can pack in to a mortar. Now, this amount here is related to the properties of the mortar as far as concrete is concerned and this amount will depend on the properties of the paste as far as a mortar is concerned. This volume fraction is also related to the properties of the particulate matter that is what is the kind of size, gradation, density, shape and so on of the particles. So, if we have one set of aggregates the volume could be 44 percent and for another set of aggregates it could be 40 percent or 49 percent or whatever that number is. The second matter of concern that was mentioned earlier was aggregate interlock. When concrete flows the way it is shown here in a pipe there are chances that this kind of an interlock or arching is observed at times. Now, this formation of an arch makes it difficult for concrete to actually negotiate through the aggregates and we do not get concrete flow here or at best we may get some kind of mortar flowing through the voids in the aggregate system. So, we cannot afford to have aggregate interlock and this interlock or the susceptibility of a concrete to have aggregate interlock is related to the ratio of the size of the opening through which the concrete flows. So, if the susceptibility for interlock depends on the ratio of the size of the opening through which the concrete flows to the size of the coarse aggregate. So, if this diameter here of the pipe is very much larger compared to the size of these particles here, the chances of aggregate interlock happening are very very small. Whereas, if this diameter d is much smaller or is small and we are trying to push through aggregates or concrete having aggregates which are larger then the chances of some kind of an aggregate interlock occurring preventing the kind of concrete to flow through is very high. So, now the chances for aggregate interlock or the susceptibility to aggregate interlock is also related to the maximum size shape and the volume fraction of the aggregates. So, if the volume fraction of aggregates is small then again the chances of aggregate interlock are small. Whereas, if we keep having more and more aggregates in the system for a given shape, size and so on, if simply the volume fraction is increased the chances of the interlock keep increasing. Now, that is something again which a person who is trying to proportion a concrete mix of this kind of consistency or flowability must be aware of. Now, if we summarize or we look at the properties of concrete in totality, we can say that the properties of concrete in this perspective, it can be said that in order to get a certain property as far as concrete is concerned, we need to ensure that mortar has a certain property. We need to ensure that the aggregate has a certain property that is in terms of its gradation, density, particle size and so on 
and the concentration of aggregates is below the threshold concentration that we talked about. In other words for a given nature of aggregates we can have a critical maximum volume beyond which using a normal mortar is not sustainable. This maximum level can be called a carrying capacity of the fluid phase or the mortar. Now, let us talk a little bit about the constituents of the paste. Cement is of course, the fundamental ingredient, because cement paste in the context of concrete engineering definitely has cement, but it can have other particles as well. Other materials can also be added to the powder volume and concentration. Of course, out of these materials such as fly ash, blast furnace slag and so on, they also contribute to the strength development and hydration of the cement and the cement products and also contribute to the strength development, hydration products being formed and so on. Whereas, those such as stone dust contribute only to the powder volume, but play an important role when it comes to modifying the properties of the paste. Simply increasing the cement content to increase the powder volume has obvious undesirable effects primarily on account of economy and the fact that cement has an associated heat of hydration and we would not like to use more cement than is absolutely required. But if we require a higher powder volume then we need to turn to materials such as fly ash or stone dust and so on. Increasing the powder content in the paste increases its carrying capacity or the holding capacity that we defined just now and also has the effect of increasing the mortar content in the concrete mix. So, even though we are talking about paste here, but if we use materials such as fly ash or stone dust, it contributes to the paste volume, but once we increase the paste volume, we also increase the mortar volume in the concrete. Yet another route apart from increasing the powder content, which is available for modification of paste properties is the use of chemical admixtures, which could be superplasticizers or viscosity modifying agents. Of these superplasticizers help us increase the cement and or powder content at a given water content without compromising on the workability of the mix. That is the whole principle of a superplasticizer or a plasticizer that we can have more powder at the same level of workability. Our fundamental understanding in this course so far and that is what is going to be practiced in even other discussions other than the discussion that we are having today is that in order to increase the workability we need to increase water. In this case here we are saying that it is not necessary to increase water we can do that with also using plasticizers. Viscosity modifiers or the other set of chemical admixtures can be used to engineer the viscosity of the paste that is through their use the water content in a mix can be increased without increasing the susceptibility to segregate by increasing the viscosity of the paste. Now, when we are talking of the self compactability of such concretes, we have to understand that we would like to increase the deformability of the paste. The paste should be such that can be deformed more easily. Now, in order to deform the paste, we need to use more water. We somehow need to increase the water powder ratio. A paste which has a higher water powder ratio is easier to deform, which means that we need to use super plasticizers for such paste. But at the same time, we also need adequate viscosity, and for that, we need to decrease the water powder ratio. And in order to get this thing, we need to use viscosity agents or what we called viscosity modifiers in the last slide. So, now it is a trade off between these two. 
what is the kind of water powder ratio to be used and what combination of plasticizers and the viscosity agents is used in order that the paste phase here has the right kind of rheological properties to be able to support a given system of coarse aggregates or of sand depending on what you are talking about if you are talking about mortar then we are talking of paste and sand together if we are talking of concrete then this here is really the mortar and this is the coarse aggregate. So, the principle remains the same that is on the one hand we are talking of the need to increase the water powder ratio have more water basically in the system in order that the fluid phase becomes more deformable and on the other hand we are talking of the need to decrease the amount of water in the system increase the powder content in the system to have adequate viscosity and segregation resistance. So, this picture here is a representation of more or less the same thing that we saw previously. We talk in terms of high deformability getting it through plasticizers, then we talk of high segregation resistance we get it through the reduced water powder ratio and we have a limited aggregate volume. So, we try to limit the volume of coarse aggregates in the system and finally, we land up with the property of self compatibility or it could be basically very high flowability concretes. Very high flowability concretes need not be self compacting. For example, very often we have concretes which are highly flowable and all rules governing high flowability concretes will apply except for the fact that we will still need some amount of external energy or vibration in order to make sure that the concrete is properly compacted. Now, as for a self compacting concrete as we have discussed it is a balance between the fluidity and the resistance to segregation and these two are essentially conflicting properties and a stable equilibrium between these two needs to be established. Now, let us look at the tendency of blocking in concrete especially near the bars. Now, if we consider this thought experiment or an actual experiment we can actually carry out this experiment and collect the data or even just think about how this experiment would work. If we fill mortar in this cylinder and we push a plate which has this kind of a configuration which has holes here and this plate is pushed into this mortar what do we expect will happen. If this material here was purely water then as the piston is inserted the water will simply flow out of these holes. However, if this material here is not water and is actually mortar which has cement paste and sand then we can draw pictures such as these where we say that okay, if we keep changing the volume of a given sand in the mortar then what is the possibility that the flow of mortar through these holes will be blocked. We, for we will find that if the sand volume for example, is greater than 44 percent as seen here the chances of blocking are almost 1. Whereas, if it is less than this number let us say 42 the chances are that we can still push the piston and this plate through the mortar with the mortar continuing to flow out. Another thing which is important to understand as far as this kind of an experiment is concerned is the relationship between the diameter of the hole through which we are forcing the mortar to flow and the diameter or the particle size of the sand. So, if we plot that or if we keep that in mind then we try to find out what is the critical volume of sand which is required or which can be supported without blocking. Then we find that depending on the ratio of the holes diameter to the average size of sand the behavior is something like this.
that is no matter what this ratio is if the critical volume or the volume of sand exceeds 40 to 45 percent the flow is still blocked. This kind of a discussion really sets the rules for talking in terms of high flowability concretes or self compacting concretes and so on. Concretes are special in this context concretes become special when we start to talk in terms of these kind of things that is what is the kind of flow pattern, what is the kind of flow that we expect the concrete, what is the kind of relationship between the maximum particle size that is the maximum size of the coarse aggregate that we have in relation to the kind of properties in the mortar as far as the viscosity and deformability is concerned, how does that impact the flow of concrete through pipes and so on. So, if we read the text here we say that coarse aggregate in concrete simulated by larger cement particles we could easily extend this discussion or this kind of an experiment to concrete except that we will need a much larger setup because in that case when we talk of the ratio of the hole diameter to the particle size we could be talking of a single hole being at least say 80 mm or 100 mm and so on assuming that we are going to be using say 20 mm kind of particles. Also shown here are results from mortar tests carried out by varying the sand content and the hole diameter and it can be noted that there is a sudden tendency for blocking to occur. So, whether it is this picture here or it is this value here the blocking is somehow a very sudden behavior or it happens very abruptly. So, it is not that gradually it will happen, but it happens very abruptly. So, at a certain percentage of the particulate matter or concentration of particulate matter beyond that suddenly we find that the material does not move. Now, one, once it comes to proportioning of concrete mixes as far as our traditional system is concerned we had talked in terms of a unit water content and a slump and we said that the relationship is more or less linear and we had said that we can talk in terms of a water cement ratio and a strength relationship where the strength and the water cement ratio are inversely related and coupled with this what we had said was that for a given slump we first determine the water content. So, the first thing that gets determined is the water content, the second thing that gets determined based on this water cement ratio and the strength that we have knowing the water content is the cement content and the third thing that we get using the S by A is the sand content in the mix and finally, we get the coarse aggregate content. So, this was our fundamental flow of thought process when we are talking in terms of the proportioning of normal concrete mixes. Of course, to begin with we had to know what is the amount of air in fresh concrete. So, now once we look at the self compacting concrete kind of mix proportioning we find that the steps are quite different and one of the strategies that has been put forward is to decide what is the air content that is going to be used and then come to the volume of coarse aggregate. Remember that the volume of coarse aggregate in the normal mixes was determined last but in this case we are trying to get that thing at the first instance because that is the amount of maximum amount of aggregate that can be supported by the mortar. So, what is the kind of volume of coarse aggregate that can be supported from there by the same argument we then determine the volume of fine aggregate that the paste can support, we determine the water to powder volume ratio and then we determine the dosage of plasticizers and chemical admixtures. So, the thought process here is quite different from that followed in proportioning normal concrete mixes where the water is determined first, then the cement, then the sand and then the coarse aggregate. In this case it is the coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, water to powder volume and finally, the chemical admixtures. In order to ensure that the paste and then the mortar have the right kind of rheological properties to ensure that the concrete can be 
high flowing without segregating. Now, if we look at how a cubic meter or a thousand liters of concrete is made up as far as conventional air entrained concrete and self compacting concrete is concerned, we find that the amount of coarse aggregate is lesser here, the sand is higher, the powder content is higher, but not so much the water content. So, the viscosity in the paste phase or the mortar phase is imparted by the increased powder content and use of appropriate admixtures. And by reducing the amount of coarse aggregate in the system, we have reduced the chances of aggregate interlock and made it easier for the concrete to be transported without segregation. Now, in the case of self compacting concrete, this aggregate content which ranges from say 28 percent to 30 percent, 30 percent to 33 percent or maybe 35 percent, this really determines or this is determined from the kind of construction that we are using the concrete for. If the concrete is being placed in open spaces without obstructions, we can use more coarse aggregate. Whereas, if we want the concrete to be moving through or negotiating complicated passages, then the amount of aggregate that can be supported is smaller. So, in our discussion today, what we have done is established the ground rules for a self compacting concrete or a very high flowability concrete, which is moved around more like a fluid. What we have done is talk in terms of the modification of the fluid properties on account of the presence of particulate matter and talked in terms of a critical volume of the particulate matter that a given fluid can sustain without segregation. Now, having done that, we will see the measurement of the workability of concrete such as the self compacting concrete in the subsequent discussion, but let us close our discussion with some questions. We could prepare a list of references which discuss the movement of fresh concrete in terms of a fluid, where concrete is looked upon more as a fluid. We could study basically the rheology of fresh concrete. We could study practices in ready mixed concrete plants for maintenance of equipment pipes and pumps etcetera, as to how they tackle the problem of deposition of mortar and concrete in the surface or on the surface of concrete near the bends and so on. And we could study about viscosity modifiers and their use in concrete, what is their nature as far as the chemistry is concerned and the mechanism of their action as far as hydration products and so on is concerned. And we could make a list of applications of high workability concretes including the self consolidating or self compacting concretes and study their mixed proportion from the point of view of the maximum coarse aggregate size used, the contribution or the volumetric proportion of the coarse aggregates, the sand and so on. I must acknowledge the help and the interesting discussions that I had with my friend Takada and some part of this discussion here in, in today's presentation has been taken from his PhD thesis which he submitted at the University of Delft. Thank you.